You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. That's right, Jesters. You've all got a friend in me. It's me, Warren Sprague, back for another Jester preview with a hat under a hat. Because that's improv. That's right, folks. I'm back with another Jester preview. This is our, what, 18th of them done this year? And I've almost got it all down. First, I have to introduce the king of Jesters to join us on Talking With our school today, and that's a uh, King Kobe. Come on out, bud. I was looking for another hat to put on top of my hat. Oh, well, next time, be more prepared for my randomness. All right. Uh, joining us today is truly a royal figure in high school jesters. She is the face of the jest, uh, the high school jesters uh, quarantine beauty pageant that we had just a few months ago. She's also, without a doubt, one of the best improvers I think I've seen, certainly in my seven years as a coach. Uh, she's full of energy. She's capable of stealing a scene, no matter what kind of scene it is. Let's welcome her now. It's Marley Steinlein of Burkhardt Improv! Ah, Warren's really trying to make me cry before I even come on camera. You know, ah. Warren, <laughs> try hard. to make you cry, for sure. <laughs> It um, will happen by the end of this, of this thing. <laughs> I love making high school children cry. Yay! <laughs> Why well, we always play miming games on day one. Uh, well, well, so so yeah, to keep the accolades going. Then yeah, uh, if you've if anyone has seen the new format video uh, for how shows would work this year in an online format, that was a hundred percent Marley's invention. Um, right. I, I don't even think I'm in that video at all. I think that was all Marley, top to bottom. Uh, Marley was nominated for MVP last year. Uh, she has been, I mean, without Marley, there is no Burkhart. Uh, and, 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 I'm, and I'd like to actually openly talk about that story um, and jump into it from there. So Marley's a four-year player from Palo Verde High School. And Marley was a part of the Palo Verde improv team her first two years. Uh, but somewhere in her second year, um, just things changed at Palo Verde to the point to where in her junior year, they actually weren't necessarily given a green light to do improv. So uh, we created Burkhart. Burkhart is essentially the Palo Verde improv team uh, in a way. So um, they started practicing in a park. They started, and I'm sure they practice at houses and all that kind of thing. Uh, and they are kind of quasi coached by an old Palo Verde player. So, but without Marley's like steering that shit, I mean, I don't know if that thing would have happened. So Marley, how do you feel being the, the truck driver here? Ah! <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's the only feeling I have. It's just, it's, it's really awesome to like, a, a big benefit of it is that like, since it's all Palo kids, it's all the, the quirky kids who are doing this just for the love of improv and to be funny. And that's a really good atmosphere. It's just a bunch of guys being dudes. Like, we just make each other laugh, and we're all best friends. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's super cool. Um, <laughs> I have no doubt that any team that gets to center around you is going to have... Uh, certainly a creative dynamo, certainly someone capable of catching virtually any suggestions from their way. Like they're really at a benefit of getting to learn from somebody like you who's gotten to learn from some of the best freaking improvisers to precede you, right? I mean, you've had, uh, oh of course, Miley <laughs> is a huge deal. Uh, and Marshall, such an amazing duo to learn from. You've, you, you've since, I would say, embodied what makes both of them great because you're very self-aware, but you're also capable of doing whatever you want. And you've got a smile that steals the show for sure. Like you've just oh you've got Miley's smile, right? So what are the different things you would say you took from two great uh, improvers like that or any of the other team members who've come and gone? Um, there's actually uh, one of the videos Kobe posted a while ago of old games. There's a video of director, I think, and it's me Miley, Seth, and Rita, I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, and it, it's like my first or second show. I'm a freshman, and you can see I do literally everything Seth does. <laughs> like, he'll talk first, and then I'll be like, yes, <laughs> that! Um, 
it, it, I was, should have been embarrassed, but I honestly thought it was really cute. Um, so I kind of, I'm a very, it might seem like I'm very right brain. I, a lot of people get that impression, but if you know me like at school, I'm a super like tightly wound left brain kind of person. And I, I just kind of watch and I see what works with people and then I try it out. And if it works with me, then that works. A lot of working things, so. <laughs> You know, I love that approach. I think that a lot of improvisers watch other performers and instead of getting, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm generalizing here, maybe not specifically for jesters, but just in, improv as an art form. I think a lot of improvisers will watch others and go, oh darn, I can't do things as creatively as them, or I can't approach it like them, or I can't, th they use it as a means to talk themselves out of situations. So I love that you embrace the differences between you and what you know you. and what your teammates brought you and you got to go, oh, I get to pick and choose here and take what I like and what I don't like and use it as a source of inspiration for you. That must mean that failure never really bothered you a whole lot. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, I think every jester's person kind of feels this. You look back to like your first show or your first year and you're like... I was a little bad at this, but I, like, now that doesn't bother me as much, because if that never happened, I wouldn't be where I am right now, where I'm, you know, I wouldn't go out and say, like, I am the best improv performer ever, but I'm definitely confident, like, I can right. go out there and be like, I, I might be a little funny, like, let's see what happens. Well, let me, let me paint more of a picture too. So the Palo Verde Burkhart transition, um, I mean, could have worked or could not have worked. And uh, I mean, that's just the truth of it. <laughs> but here is kind of what happened is we had this, this kind of weird Burkhart team come in and be super powerful, uh, actually have a lot of really strong performers, enough, enough so to the point to where before this interview, I asked Molly or Mar Molly Marley, uh, who should do this interview? Because Marley kind of ends up being in this position a lot, but I'm thinking about all your other teammates uh, last year. Mm -hmm. So I already said Molly and Bailey um, or your crazy boys or Sam, you got nominated for MVP, but Sam won the all-star for, for Burkhart. Mm -hmm. So you've got people around you that are really strong right now. Um, so that excites me for Burkhart this year. Like uh, it, it, whether it's online or in person, you guys are going to be strong. Oh yeah. I love my team so much. They're, they're honestly all of my best friends. And something I think is one of Burkhardt's greatest strengths is that we have a lot of like diversity in our talent. Like we have a few wild cards. We have a few, I don't want to call them straight people, but I think that's the term for them. Um, we, and we have a few people who just know how to work it, that just do their own thing. It's great. You know, it's funny. A lot of us have different ideas about what a team is composed of. You know, my idea as a coach has changed so many times over the years. I used to think that a team was made up of like a captain, some steak, some sizzle, and a wild card. And that's how you wanted to piece your teams together. Now that you're entering your final year of improv, whether you like it or not, is this the time where you're really recognizing what a team needs? and what a team should get from one another and how to really give and take? Yeah, I feel like when you start out improv, it's more like, it's it's very kind of binary in a way where it's like, this is funny, this is not, you know? And, and you can tell by what makes you laugh, what works, mm -hmm. but the the more you spend with it, the more kind of scientific and mathematical it gets, if that makes any sense. It's like, well, it, it's not really that this is not completely funny. There are elements of it. And, you know, it's it's all about figuring out how to make things better and what components make those things better. <laughs> so you're already starting to talk like a league MVP, which doesn't surprise me. I wonder then, I want to ask you, as you're talking with your, your, your teammates and you're getting ready to pass the team to them, are you already consciously giving them your best practices that you've developed over the years? Oh, uh, yeah. I One of the things that Burkhart and Paolo kind of did is we had this practice that, you know, if you're going to do, if you're going to do something really crazy, do it in rehearsal. 
uh, do it at practice and let all of the stuff that will be too much for jesters out and then, you know, do jesters here. And that's a, that's a really good practice for this team uh, because there was a rehearsal last year where we did like two whole scenes in Japanese. <laughs> it was, <laughs> we're all weebs. So. There, there's a lot of things that I've seen happen in a Palo Verde practice that yes, I can't talk about in a video. It's insane. And I think a lot of, it's very kind of symbiotic where at rehearsals, we pick up on a lot of stuff and we drop a lot of stuff. And I noticed that that was a very Palo Verde thing that kind of manifested in Burkhart. Uh, Marley, before we get to impression time, uh, hopefully, uh -huh. hopefully after your tenure and you, and you graduate and move on, we can somehow find a way to, to get improv moving again at the Palo Verde or Burkhart uh -huh. <laughs> investment, whichever way it goes. So what could you say to anyone who's younger that might come in next year or this year to make them enjoy this or take over for you? What okay. could you say? Number one, you guys are getting so many kisses from me. It's so <laughs> cute. Um, one of the best parts about being a senior is like seeing freshmen and being like, oh, you're actual children. Like, hi, babies. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Ever, it's, everyone's just running to join right now. They are I know. straight up. Uh, <laughs> your sign up list <laughs> is so, <laughs> so far. I'm uh, listening. Yeah. And I guess the only other, like, the real piece of advice is just, be confident because the only way I remember being a freshman and being like, I am not funny, this is not good, I am very nervous. But once I kind of shed that doubt, that's when I really started getting better. And my coaches and my peers all started noticing me getting better. So if you come in with that confidence, all you can do is go up because if you doubt yourself, you're preventing yourself from rising to the top. I love that you put it out there as a conscious choice to shed the, the confidence issues. I, I definitely vibe with that. Uh, I think it's an important step for any improver to take to just be like, you know, I know who I am and I'm going to put myself out there and no matter what, it's going to be okay because that's the name of the game. So I love that. Good choices. But your confidence glows because of the coaches you've had around you. So we got to ask, if you don't mind, uh, can you share even more of that coaching confidence with us by doing maybe an impression of a coach who stood out to you in your history? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm definitely going to do Dylan, but I just want to say that me and Sam were having a conversation the other day because uh, I got sick and I threw up and I just told him, oh, Justin, Justin, I'm going to throw up to me. <laughs> <laughs> so Justin, if you're out there, I'm thinking about you. <laughs> okay. Justin's yeah. everywhere. He's everywhere. <laughs> so do your Dylan, go. Okay, this is my mug. Dylan has a mug a lot. Hey! <laughs> you guys see that last Mets game? <laughs> you guys should rein it in. You're getting a little cuckoo kachoo over there. <laughs> My name is Dylan, and I like to give kisses. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we'll stop right there. Yep. Wow. Every, everything around Marley likes to give kisses. I feel like she's just growing affection all around I've her. I've had to stop her so many times. I accidentally yeah. said it to one of my teachers once. I was like... <laughs> I guess now we know what we go to. Forever. My improv personality is starting to invade my normal life. Oh and no, it's the hat. That's how you know you're doing it right. Yeah, the hats. Yeah. <laughs> guess what, Marley? It's game time. Ooh. We're about to play together that we haven't played yet with any other school. It may even be a game that you've never played before. It may oh, even goodness. be a game that I've never played before, and I've been playing games with Kobe since I was way too little. So let's go ahead and take a look at what the game's going to be, and let's have some fun. We're going to play some understudies. Oh, yeah. so <laughs> wow, understudies! What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Two of us are going to start off doing a scene. A third person's going to be away and can't watch the scene. Uh, who would like to be that person? And if you'd like it to be me, I will go away. <laughs> Leave Kofi. Okay. Let, let me so, and Lord have some, some time together. 
Cool. Oh, cool. So I you're going to do, the two of you are going to do a scene together while I'm away. I can't watch it or hear it. Uh, when you are done with the scene, just yell out Kopi. Uh, I, you might have to yell it two or three times. That's fine. Uh, when I hear my name, I will come back. And then uh, basically I'm going to kick one of you out of the scene as you're understudy. Oh, you can't, you can't tell me anything about the scene. You can't tell me what's going on. I am just going to jump in. Now you aren't necessarily going to do a replay style. It's not going to be word for word. You are just going to do your best to make sure that the scene kind of happens again, even okay. with my <laughs> weird input. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So I'll go away. The suggestion you need to figure out for yourselves right now is yeah. uh, the name of a made up play. The name Perfect. Man, no like... problem. Go yep. away. I'm sure. Okay, we're gonna... I'm going bye-bye. Bye, Kobe. Bye. All Can right, Marley, we're gonna see you together for the first time ever. Uh what on earth is a play that we've never heard of, never seen? Give it to me. Arthur Miller's hit play, Elmer's Glue, the musical. Elmer's Glue, the musical. I love it. Arthur Miller's, right, is the name that you gave us? Of course, because cool. Arthur Miller only wrote musicals. <laughs> Perfect. I'm so excited. Uh, one more time, Elmer's glue. Elmer's glue. <laughs> that's all. That's what it's called. All right. Perfect. Yes. Are you our one man showman, or is, in, a, in other words, do you want to start, or shall uh, I start? How about you start? Let's go crazy. <laughs> Show your camera and pop in when you're ready. <laughs> oh, hi. Didn't see you there. It's me, Arthur Miller. Welcome to my one man show. You know, it's a crazy thing all these years ago. I didn't know that Elmer's glue would be the key to all my success. I've climbed Mount Everest as my stunt double is gonna show you now. I've gone- It's me, Arthur Miller's stunt double. Let's climb the mountain. Sorry, the stunt double wasn't supposed to talk. Hey, can you just climb Mount Everest real quick? Sure, dude. Okay. <laughs> See, there he goes. Climbing Mount Everest. I we're also It's a good time up here. It's a little chilly, but we're climbing Mount Everest. Hey, come on. You're you're remember it's a one man show with me, oh, Arthur. Miller. Okay, I got you. I got you, dude. Okay. I'll, I'll go away. Okay, got you. I, after I you're doing, you're doing great, dude. Do it great. I love the energy. I love the energy. You know, it was funny in rehearsals, but okay. So after I climbed Mount Everest. I went go. I went sailing through the Gobi Desert on my land sail. <laughs> We're gonna go sailing through the Gobi Desert on a land sail. You know, yeah, I narrate it. I narrate. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll be quiet. You, you go ahead. You go ahead. Go ahead. You're doing great. I love the energy. There okay. Bye. Okay. There she goes. Land sailing. Good. Um, and then after that, I invented Elmer's glue. Of course, it was the biggest deal. Uh, I put everything together one step at a time and, and paste it into success. Hey, my earbud fell out, but I think we should do the scene where I go to the top of the Eiffel Tower and then I just jump off. Let's go crazy. Let's do my favorite. I love the energy. You weren't supposed to talk! Gosh, I can't work with you! That's okay. You know what? I'm loving the energy. You're passionate. See. <laughs> Good. Friday. So, can I please suggest that you kick out Marley just for the no. sake? No. <laughs> uh, no, because now you're giving stuff away. So, um, oh no, Warren just came down with COVID. Uh, well, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Can't I'll be in the play. Perfectly fine. It doesn't hurt. So, as Warren's understudy, uh, I know ev the lines and everything. Here we go. Here's the. Let's do it. Let's do it. It's here's great. night two it. of this performance. <laughs> and begin. Tis I, the Prince of New Jersey. That's right. It was handed down to me from Governor Chris Christie. <laughs> I stand before you as my father, the, the king stood before you in the past. Oh, he stood for you on the top of Mount Everest. Bam, bam, bam. Hello, my prince. I love the energy. Let's climb Mount Everest together, shall we? That's right. This is my little brother who didn't get sworn in as a prince. Let's I'm go. I'm spending family time.
trying to show the. We're climbing Mount Everest. Love the energy. So much fun. The, the, I'm trying to show that all the oh. New Jersey people to travel, that it's safe to travel now, and you, you should do it with your families. Oh, oh, maybe we should go down Mount Everest. Doing it with your family is not safe because it's super cold up here, and little kids might die. <laughs> yep, they might. We should go down the mountain. This sounds like a smart plan that I vote for. Love the energy. You're doing so good, big bro. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, if we could talk about important issues at hand, and that is pollution. New, New Jersey has a lot of pollution. You know what? I think we should go land sailing through that pollution. There's no better way to get through it than by land sailing. Let's make pollution pollute fun. Here's my land sailor. I I agree with everything my little brother is saying, and I'm going to be supportive. I'll be quiet, brother. You can keep going with your speech, but I'm going to have a good time. I'm, I, I, I'm Chris Christie. I love having good times. We're, we're marching. <laughs> okay, brother. My earbud fell out, so I didn't hear what you just said, but I think our next body activity to show the power of New Jersey is that we're going to get to the top of the Eiffel Tower that we're going to jump off. This, this, is, this is where I say, uh, little brother, that we need to schedule another play date because I'm not sure that that would be the I best. I love the energy, big bro. You know, I get it. I get it. You want me to step back. I'll, get, I'll give you some space to finish whatever you're doing. You're the star, big bro. Okay, I'm just, I'm... Uh, um... <laughs> Scene! I'll jump. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That oh, is now great. Everest on a rolly chair. Don't do that at home. <laughs> I am so happy that happened. That was so fun to watch on my end because, Marley, you did an amazing job trying to push the whole entire concept of the previous scene and Kofi did a great job just trying to figure out what that could be. I loved it. It's so funny to watch and most of all, it's inspiring, but not as inspiring as two things. The first thing is a completely non-advised uh, thing to Kofi. I just want to say something to you, Marley. Um, I have been doing improv for 10 years and even though I've been doing improv for 10 years, I'm still scared of it sometimes. Sometimes I'm still scared of myself. Sometimes I'm still scared of what people will think when I'm involved in any aspect of it. And the reason why I'm telling you that is because you gave me a really great gift this past uh, summer. And that was during the pageant when, or actually it was in, when we were transitioning, excuse me, into talking about this year. And you did that video and then you requested that I be your evil villain. I, I gotta say, it really made me feel amazing as a person, especially being somebody who's been part of Jesters for such a long time, to get brought in by a student to be a part of something. And it's been a big part of why I feel so comfy doing improv now with Kofi every day and with the rest of these schools. Because if you, a very talented MVP worthy candidate in our league, would want to use me, then maybe I'm worth being used Aww. and as weird as that sounds it was a really nice lesson to learn so thank you for inspiring Aww. me marley you are i'll, awesome. I'll always use you roman <laughs> not roman warren <laughs> roman was Not my partner in that I could have ever had. <laughs> you look very evil warren i could have thought i couldn't have thought of anyone better to play my evil villain that yeah. likes to kidnap puppies just want to let you know you're an awesome soul for that. And the second thing that inspires us around here is music. We're always being brought together to appreciate some awesome tunage uh, because music is what carries the messages that brings every culture together. It really is a small world out there, guys. Um, so we're going to listen to a little wisdom from a song, which has become a tradition of ours. But... Yeah, but I, I, I'm listening to all of you viewers out there, and I know that 
pretty much every week, every show, episode, whatever this is, uh, song really doesn't incite us. So uh, I've, tried, I've tried giving her a couple like direct songs. This is the song we need. This is a song that's inspirational. And I figured it out, Warren. There's no way she can mess this up. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Okay. Frozen. There's no way, no way she can mess this up, right? I'm so Inspirational. We all probably know the words by heart. So let's listen to Wisdom from a Song. I got my cocoa. So come on, let it go. Just let it be. Why don't you be you and I'll be me? Screw, this. Oh, no. Screw that terrible song! Screw James Bay! Can we go back episode. to the You Got a Friend in Me from the beginning? Yeah. <laughs> I thought I was coming here for some good Disney tunage. I will be taking myself and my Perry the Platypus commemorative rug elsewhere. Good day, sir! Yes. Until next time, just a preview world. We'll see you again. I'm gonna be as red as my shirt when I'm done! Yeah. There's soup in here and I'm licking it up like a little kitty cat.